Dan here, DD Speed Shop. I just bought a contents of a sea can. Now, there was a picture, and all it was was a piece of junk Volkswagen, which I've already got an owner for. And I thought in the background, I just saw the little bit of what looked like a Nomad, like a Chevy Nomad. So, it's a gamble, but I'm hoping that's what it is. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Holy shit. So, this pile, I've got a buyer for it. That's no problem. <laughs> smells like 55. It's Squablog Chevy. <laughs> smells like a stick shift. It might have a power adder on it. Okay, let's get this pile open. We'll get this junker. German Das Auto. We'll get that. There's a motorcycle on the back too. I never noticed that, the picture. Holy moly. We've got it all. Okay, we'll get this junker out of here and then, uh, yeah. We got something. We got that junker out. It is, it's a Nomad. Who would leave a Nomad in a sea container? This is amazing. It's a stick car. Wow. Are you? <laughs> Look at this. So I popped the hood, I was looking at it. Come on down. It's got a dang old supercharger on it. Look at this. Look at this thing. Brand new FST carburetor, Lion intake, belt driven intake manifold. Man. I, I just kind of just you know put the battery on it there and it made a couple of clicky noises so I think it'll fire up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? How many people find an abandoned nomad? I'm so confident we're driving it out, I'm gonna put the hood down. Ooh, hood don't fit for shit. Whoever did the fit and finish on this thing, they're a bit of a hack. Okay, let's see. Ah. Put a little, okay, it's in neutral, has power, come on, wow, look at that, it moves, oh it's tight in here, get her over a little, Line me up. Oh yeah. It's charging, 60 pounds oil pressure. It's running a little on the rich side. Look at this hot rod though. I don't think we're gonna risk it. We're gonna tow it home. We're good? Gentle. Gentle. Sounds like she's got a miss. Oh yeah. Woo -wee. It looks like someone went on a road trip and just left all the junk in it. All right, let's get this thing set up. We'll, uh... oh yeah. We'll just go ahead and tow her on home. Okay, let's bring this baby home. Whoops, reverse helps. We're just gonna go ahead and cheat and tow it by the, the front wheels, because I'm lazy. I don't really wanna feel like strapping the windshield or the steering wheel. We should be good.
Get her lined up. Oh, this thing has a light bar on it. I think I might have left it in neutral, but. Got it. Let's just go ahead and suck this thing in a little. Should be good. Will look good? They always look good. Telling a nomad. Don't forget to pin the hood down. Oh yeah. It's a good thing you're here. I would have forgotten that. Someone left hood pins here. Must have been the previous owner. Remember when I put hood pins on this? People got so mad. Now look at me. Struggling with them. Perfect. Okay, well, I'll just get this. Oh, there's still dead bugs all over the front. Oh, huh. this thing's rougher than I remember. I'll strap her down. I got lug nuts on the back. All the tires are good, eh? Yeah. What a badass ratty hot rod. Okay, let's get set up. We'll uh, hit the road. Okay, so it's a new day. Next day. And, uh, oh, I already dented that. Work in the shop. So, obviously, this is my 55 Chevy Nomad, which I've had for a while now, a couple of years. Last year, it was an all-out thrash uh, right around this time to make it on Power Tour 2023. So, we drove this thing from Manitoba, Canada, all the way down to Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, and hung out there for a bit with our friends, and we did the trip, and then we drove back. And we actually towed... Another car back. This thing, absolute workhorse. So it's a very down and dirty, simple, simple car. It's like the exact car I would build for myself. Fortunately, I do, I did build it for myself. <laughs> so it's a uh, small block Chevrolet. It's a 350 with a set of Edelbrock aluminum heads, um, a bit of a you know hydraulic camshaft, nothing serious, with a set of uh, headers. And we had originally a single tunnel ram and a Holly four barrel on it which worked great there was no real issues with that um i'm saying it's like a 350 horse deal i mean it definitely when you wail on it you felt it but it wasn't scaring you and then last year my good pal david newburn he bought some stuff from it was like a summit closeout deal and one of the items was this mini blower which i bought so this is a i think it's a 142 uh yn deal and it was a display model for many many years and I got it relatively cheap, so I immediately bolted it on. And then my, uh, you know, carburetor Ken hooked me up with a FST carburetor, and it's got—I don't know if I even showed this last year, but it's a boost reference deal. So I believe that's what this is, and it will change some sort of fueling. Man, sitting outside, eh? Um, based on whatever's going on there. Now I literally put this carburetor on there, and then winter immediately hit. So I can already see for now. The carburetor floats are too high, everything. It ran real rich. It fouled out some plugs and just a couple times I drove it, which was like zero tuning. It idles fast. There's nothing I did to it that was <laughs> proper. So that's the combo. I'd say it's a 450 horse-ish kind of, you know, small block Chevrolet. Torquey feels it. It's amazing. Inside, um, we uh, we ponied up and went with the American powertrain deal. This is the most I've ever spent or done to a car ever, but it's got a TKX uh, five-speed overdrive, which is just, this thing is badass with a hydraulic clutch. It's so nice. And the rear end is a quick performance nine inch, which I believe when I ordered it, I narrowed it, I think only one inch or something like that. And... Uh, and that was that. It has factory drum brakes on it, but it's got half-inch studs. So the whole combination, like the rear end, the transmission, I think they're both good for like 600 horsepower or something like that. And the motor, like I said, it's probably making 450 or something along those lines. So it's all like the motor's the weak part, which is what I wanted. These are the tires, which I got to put on like immediately. I just put these on for... Uh, I don't even know why I put those on. Well, I wanted these on another car, I think was the main issue. So we're going to put those things on there. Uh, otherwise, oh, I got a, my buddy Delta John. We got a, we got a Delta fan on it, Delta PAG fan. Thing just rocks hard, keeps it cool. This thing ran like 
180 degrees, no problem, all, all sitting in power tour, just chugging away, idling and stuff like that. So this is just like a bulletproof driveline. And of course I did all the amazing bodywork. It actually had pretty rust free fenders and a hood, which I ruined by cutting a hole in it. And uh, yeah, I think this was a, I think I paid two grand for the car. Obviously it was nothing like this. If you go back to last year's a whole big build video on it, but it's like one of everything. I had to change the chassis because the original chassis was clipped and junk. Uh, it's got full floors front to back. I actually bought another car for the wagon section. Um, the roof was good. It came with one door. I had to build another door out of a sedan door. The front clip I had, and then uh, I bought full quarters for it. I think I fixed the tailgate and I had to buy all new glass for it. Most of the trim, all that was not there. That's where I learned if you're going to be a nomad guy, Either don't be very bright and have a lot of money or spend a little bit more and buy a complete car. It will save you so, so, so much money in the long run, even though it costs money up front. So it's a very, very simple set. There's not even a back seat in it. You know, this was full of all our garbage. It's still like, look at this. This is how I treat this thing. I drove the wheels off this thing. I probably put, I don't know, seven or 8,000 miles on it. Hard miles and everything did great. Now we still have snow on the ground here. Spring is a coming. Um, this thing had a factory heater and everything in it, which was okay. The heater first sprung a leak. It's just, there's so much money that what I bought was uh, this cheap Chinese thing, which I already dropped off Amazon. This is like an auxiliary heater and it's got, look at this. They taped the little tubes, which are like comically <laughs> junk, but, uh, to the box. So what we're, what it does, you're just going to run, uh, your, your coolant lines in there. And then it's got a, I think this is hooked up already. You'll just turn this on boom and it just has a little fan in there it's going to have four outlets so we'll have like two of the ground and then two of these will go up into the defrost area and it's basically i think well maybe it's maybe it's got a oh yeah brilliant i thought it'd be an on off so we'll see some of the stuff's pretty comical but i think it was like literally 68 dollars on scamazon so we're going to go ahead and put that in there these are the lug nuts for the, for the tires, I got a double washer them because they're an old set of um, daisy wheels. I love daisy wheels. And it's hard to find lug nuts that are short shoulders, so I just doubled the, the washers. We got a new set of plugs for it and some heater hose. Oh, we're gonna have to, I, I cap it all off, so we'll plumb in and kind of make it all together. Give it a, a nut and bolt check, adjust the carburetor, and uh, that's probably where we'll leave it on this video. Oh, the exhaust is hanging. During power tour, I hit a blown out semi-tire. I think gator skins, you call them down there, or something like that. And uh, it ripped the tailpipe off. So in the like advanced auto parking lot, I just bailing wired it up and proceeded to put like 4,000 miles on it. It's been fine since. So I want to change tires on it, make it look cool, because it's all about looking cool first. And we'll see where we can mount this thing. I'm probably going to take the factory heater core and whatnot. I think this is the door I built, just so you know. We'll take the factory heater core and box out, mount it right to the firewall, and uh, yeah, have a little aftermarket heat. Can't go wrong. Oh, I love this car. It is my favorite car I've ever owned and I've ever built. And uh, even though it's crude in a lot of ways, and I should fix up certain things, there was a lot of last minute stuff like this shroud, which I just gobbed together days before leaving for power tour. But you know what? It ain't pretty, but uh, if you can hop in and put 7,500 miles on a hot rod, I think you've done okay. So I think I did okay. Let's get started on this thing. Maybe in the video down the road, we can be driving it. Oh, been a friggin' disaster. I pulled out the heater core. It was full of rat turds. Oh, gross. I don't want to get near that. You've already been by it. Oh. All power to her. Oh, check these new shirts Danny got. Ooh. They're actually nice. They're red caps. I Available didn't... soon at ddspeedshop.ca. Oh, there you go. I didn't realize. She was like, we're going to get some work shirts. I'm like, work shirts? Wait, show them mine because mine's navy. It's the same. No, it's navy. Navy. Okay. Anyway, so, oh, what I did here. Let's hook this battery back up so we got the where, where are you going where are you going to show them the heater well you keep changing positions 
So I put the heater, it's actually under the uh, glove box. <clears throat> I pulled out the other one. So it's there, nice. We got her all, that's a perp, that's a Mortsky wire job right there. Look at that. But, uh, ooh. ooh. So it's got low and high. <laughs> three, three speeds, low, medium, high. And for some reason, it has power with the key off. So, we'll have to hey, make sure we also get that. I have a that. question for you, a follow-up. Damn it, Danielle. <laughs> a follow-up? What was the first question? Power tour. Well, at one point during power tour, there was an animal living in the roof while we were driving it. Really? Yeah. In one of the videos, you can see it, like, run in the liner. I don't remember that. So, do we think we got it out, or is it still hanging out in there? You know what? We're pro-life here at DD Speed Shop, and it's in there still. So, should we name it? <laughs> no, it's a dirty rat. <laughs> it's dead. Um, yeah, because you killed it when you took out the heater core. I did take out its nest, unfortunately. Yeah, you're not wrong. So I did that around the heater core. I ran it through where the fan went through the two lines. So that's mint. It, everything just went sideways on me. I had to take the alternator bracket off because. Like superchargers are stupid. I mean, they're absolutely awesome, but the way the little uh, the nipple came out of the water pump, it was in the way of my bracket. This <laughs> this bracket for the alternator has been so butchered because it's just, it didn't fit before, so I cut it, then I put the blower manifold on, it didn't fit, then it doesn't fit for this heater core style. I was like, oh my Lord. So anyways, now we're just gonna run these around here. So we'll run this one that way. Fender wheel headers are, uh, we'll do that one over here. Fender wheel headers are awesome, but they're also a disaster. So if we do something like that. Everyone was saying in the... Oh, this thing actually does have fenders. I was going to make a comment about how there's no fenders. There's just shit everywhere, but there's shit everywhere and there's fenders. I don't want to run this on the side because this is where the... Look at the amount of wiring. <laughs> that's a butcher job and a half. Well, okay, you hit me and then you fell. But uh, that's all the relays. This thing, when I did it... There's an excessive amount of wires and fuses there, but I did it on purpose because everything in there was all stuff I added, phone chargers, we put this uh, high beam light on it, um, the fan, I put everything individual, so if we had any failures on the highway, there was redundancy, so we could just switch stuff over. There's actually just uh, spare relays there, not even hooked up to anything. And while we were on power tour, I gave a relay to Lucky to fix his air conditioning because it was getting hot and he only had one fan going. So I'm thinking if I tuck this around like this, it's a little hokey poke. We'll just zip tie, we'll zip tie it to the, uh, to the fuel line. So we'll wrap that around there. We'll do this one to where? Something like that. DD Speed Shop Leatherman. Show them the knife part. No, the knife part. Romance. Okay, now what you want to do is you want a good or nice straight cut. Really get through there. <laughs> I love the internet. Okay, what clamps we got here? Hang on, here my way. As per usual, I got, this is my life. We have either probably too small or probably too big. We'll see if we can jam one of these on there. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. Is the drill on the roof there? I need that. I need it. Oh, maybe it won't fit actually. We'll see. Hang on. Okay, this one going over here. I'd like to avoid. I might have a little on the long side. Just just stand there and look good. Hold that if you don't mind. I wonder if we can just go across. And it won't. It's connected there. See the well, or this is where the factory heater hoses Ow. go. Well, it's got a trigger. It's I, got a, I hit myself in the head with it. A hair trigger. Maybe we'll just do this. We'll just use the factory. I think that's too close to the exhaust. She might be a little. She might be a little close. You know what? We'll try it. Here's what we'll do. We'll try it, and then if it lets go, it'll get too hot and burn. Leave us stranded, side of the road. Drill, please. You know what that does? Content. <laughs> Reality TV right here. 
People gotta start paying for cable again. Some people, no. You know, people say like it's uh, programmed os obsolescence or whatever. Wow, Look. what a word. I'm watching uh, Edison Motors. How is this gonna, man, this, this is in my way. But we got that dialed and now this one. The supercharger is super inconvenient. Oh, it's, it's so inconvenient until you're ripping on your right foot. Then it's like the best thing ever. That'll probably work. You know what I can probably do is just move that up too. Or I can just wrap those maybe in some. I don't know if I have any. Like space age foam or uh, whatever. Like this stuff. And then it'll just be perfectly safe. In all reality, what's gonna happen here, we're gonna put this on, I'll drive it twice. Next week it's supposed to be decent weather. And then I'll put a splice in that. I'll put a valve on each of them. And I'll just shut them off. And then no one will ever know the difference. <laughs> Except for a few people watching the video today. Son of a... Man. This supercharger is very inconvenient. Okay, I'm just going to get a ratchet. We'll tighten that one down. And then we'll uh, put some coolant in it and we'll check for leaks. I'll be back momentarily. Unless there's a ratchet here. No, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Hmm. You know, I probably have 50 ratchets. They're still, don't film my chaos. Where is my ratchet? People are always like, we want to see the real DD speed shop, this. <laughs> oh yeah, actually typically it's this, but it's walking back to the other garage. I thought I had a little ratchet. No, I don't. Now I really will be back. I'm going to a different part of the... Well, we can follow you. you I'm going, no, file. I'm going to a different part of the compound. You know, of times I do this trip in a day, ridiculous. <sighs> oh, found it. And we're going back. Don't forget to close the door and let the heat out. Let the old heat in. Also, I lost my impact driver, so we were just putting the uh, socket right in the drill. Well, that's also not going to work. Wow. See, this is when you know, people bitch about how much it costs to build a hot rod. You're paying by the hour. You're paying for some clown like me to walk back and forth looking for stuff. You know what I'll do is I'll just actually move this. When I get this tightened, I'll just put it on the top side and zip tie them together. Or electrical tape, whatever is most convenient. I don't have either of them. Okay. I think that's cherry. Yeah, so I'll just do this. Flip that from the bottom to the top. I think that's probably enough airspace. It didn't melt any wires. Then we have... Uh, Don't forget to tighten the other one. I did tighten it with the drill. Oh. Leftover coolant. Let's see, make sure it doesn't leak. Antifreeze, actually, I guess. Today it's antifreeze. Next week it'll be coolant. Are your feet getting wet yet? Oh, I'm in the, the drip spot. Well, you're on the low side of the garage. She's a little on the slanty side sometimes. Look at the precision I got here. It's a work shirt, it must be. Whoops. I don't hear any dripping yet. Oh man. Probably. Whoa, wow. finesse. So I and I had to so I had to change the where the uh, the temp sender was. I had it on the intake manifold, now it's on the cylinder head again, right by these damn headers, but that should be okay. So I had to replace those two pieces there. I think this thing has a thermoset in it, so I only had the one, the one jug of coolant. I might have more next door outside. But we can just fill the rest up with the water. But, because it's not that cold. 40 below, 40 below no more. Okay, let's get set up. I gotta get some stuff and we'll do spark plugs. Ah, spark plugs is terrible. We'll do spark plugs, put the rear tires on this thing. And I should probably put a proper butt clamp on that uh over butt connector <laughs> for the for the power and we're dialed okay so now yeah change some of these fine spark plugs so 
when we went to put this thing away last year, I had a small fit because uh, it runs rich, which is my own my own doing. We'll tune this thing up right quick after, but uh, I got some running for like not even five minutes. So fouled up at it. And this is a miscellaneous junk plug gapped. Um, so it did We we could have dropped it off. I towed it to the storage unit. We had it running. It was running on the street. I got up to temperature. It was, I don't know if there's snow on the ground or not, but it was running. Poorly, but it was running. And uh, I loaded it up to the tow truck. And this is when we had the sling, sling truck. So put it up, slung it, pulled it, dropped it off right at the storage unit, and it would not start. And I had unhooked it off the truck and everything. No coughing on camera, please, on set. And uh, anyway, so I had that all dialed and it wouldn't start, wouldn't start, wouldn't start. Killed the battery, had to boost it with the truck, still wouldn't go. And at this point now, I mean, the sling truck's a bit of a hassle. So to re-sling it, move it around, I couldn't back it in. It was too tight. I was like, oh, I was losing my mind. So we went to Canadian Tire and they had miscellaneous spark plugs. They didn't have eight of the same. I think it's got at least two different style plugs in here and the one plug well this side's terrible the one plug behind the steering box look at that brand new but just soot it up these are probably good usable plugs for someone else but uh so i could only change seven plugs or maybe i only got six and i got it running enough that we put it in the can but i was wasn't having it danny filmed it put it on her channel had a small fight about it. Good. We'll carry on. Oh, another tech tip. One time I was doing spark plugs on a car. Put a brand new set of plugs on it. That 70 Chevelle that got turned into a parts car due to bad ownership. Um, and it would only run on seven after this set of spark plugs. I'm like, what the hell? So anyways, drove it over to Murr's. And of course, stupid Murr. Why can I not find where this is going? Um, I've heard that before. Yeah, that's it keeps you coming back. But anyways, Murr. We're testing it and testing it, and it you know had spark on all the on all the wires, and I was like, well, what the hell? So I pulled out the spark plug, and I guess either I had or at some point someone had dropped the box and it had uh, knocked the the little strap into the electrode, so it wasn't sparking. So without spark, she wasn't firing as it turns out. So we got that dealt with, and it ran on uh, one eighth better. So I'll get these other ones all dialed together right quick. I'm sure Daniel will stand here, and if I start struggling, she'll turn the camera back on. But hopefully, I just see when it's running. Hopefully. We want more work, so we're just gonna stay here. No, we're not watching me. You Everyone wants less talking, more working, so give them that. You want the Charlie Chaplin of changing spark plugs, or I just don't say Except a word? Except for the one guy that doesn't like your heavy breathing and gulping. Who? I don't know, some guy talks about your Ooh, gulping. My gulping? Well, sorry, I have to clear my throat and... <sighs> I was actually, in that last paint video, I was breathing pretty heavy because that mask was... <laughs> it was fantastic. I didn't smell any paint, so really? obviously it means I didn't have any brain damage, but... <clears throat> yeah, I was like... <gasps> I had to come into this garage and... Uh, take some like deep breaths like, like I was gonna go for a deep a deep dive or something like that you know and then go back and start working again once I caught up okay now we'll see when there's we're struggling shut the damn camera off you think a socket might be here oh are you also keeping sockets yeah, no, I'm looking for a different socket. 13 16 deep. You also never want to put your creeper on the ground here because it'll slip on it. Safety third. What day is it today? We're in March, right? Yeah. I have a... Oh, it's a Franker's one. What day is it? March 22nd? 26th. 26th? Danny at it, dude. Check. 
<laughs> I told, I feel bad. I just told Scott I was going to put this up, but I didn't. Sorry, buddy. But you're using it still. Well, how is she going to keep track of attitude? Oh, okay. What was it doing? 316. 316th is wrong. 13 sixteenths. Dyslexia. Well, you left the number out. That's not dyslexia. Kind of is. I'll we'll try the other badge. Maybe there's tools there we need. Did you check the floor? What? I don't keep garbage on the floor. Oh, and this is a different size, I think, yet again. Oh, maybe we can grab something from here. Okay, mint. That's one. What size is this one? Nope. What size is this one? Nope. Okay, we're still looking. We're still looking. Oh, this is half inch nice. Oh, maybe I have it over there. 15 sixteenths. Where's my impact machine? Oh, there it is. What does this have on it? 22 millimeter. Oh, think that's what we need? Let's strip them all. Oh, mint. Metric, here we come, okay. Where's the floor jack? It's on your side? We have a floor jack? Oh yeah, there it is. It's on the floor. Oh. That's a bunch of nice trim there though, eh? I used. This is gonna be ugly. Okay, hang on. Hang on. You know what these shirts do? It's a great job of hiding butt crack. They are quite long. Are you a high-legged man? <laughs> this is the shirt for you. Oh yeah, I still haven't fixed that exhaust. Oh, for when we hit that tire. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, get real close to that heater with all the rat turd in it. Breathe it in, buddy. Thanks, darling. Oh, I, I don't know if we have to jack the whole car up like this to get the tires or if I can do it on the rear end, but let's see what we got. I think, I think these tires are all the same size as the other ones are putting on. Oh, my favorites. Uh, nope. These tires are so much money, like a ridiculous amount of money, a mortgage payment money, but they did make it, whatever it was, however many thousand miles, and uh, loaded down while towing. So really, can you put a price on that? I think the price was over a thousand dollars. I think they were 850 for the pair actually, yeah. Which is ridiculous. One, two, three, four, a couple of Walshers. Oh, they're miscellaneous. So, oh, oh. it's cold. Got it. It's a metric thing. I'm beast. NASCAR. So these tires here, the original plan with them, these are a waste of money. So I bought these because I thought we were going to rock these on the way to Power Tour and switch these on. And then that didn't happen. Oh yeah, so the way this works now, these, I gotta double washer it, because these are vintage wheels. If you put just one washer on, and you fit it through, not on this side. Oh, uh, it's just barely. So if you have one washer, it, uh, it sticks out just a hair. So these will be tight, but the rim will actually be loose 
to the uh, to the drum. So you put a second washer on, and you can see there how it's tucked in. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that. Hope these are the right size. Yeah, half inch stuff. Oh yeah, I put bump stops on this thing and everything. I really went for it. Okay. Let's crank these things on. Oh, long studs, forgot about that. These are, these wheels, they're so cool, but they are such a hassle to get on all the time. Okay, where's my socket? Cause you gotta get them started and rotate it. And, oh my Lord. But the nice thing is with the long studs, you can kind of get it going on uh, short stud stuff. Whoo wee. You'll say a few curse words, I tell you. Okay, so we got to start it. Now, we have to get the second one here. And because the tire wants to fall and there's no, they do have a bit of a taper, but it never works out for you. So you got to kind of get them started and hold it with your foot. Tricks of the trade. And there you go, so that one's started. Yeah, tricks of the trade, tricks of hating my life, doing these, you know, it's kind of like how I like my women. I like the ones that are a hassle. But uh, it works out. <laughs> so see how it, like, it goes on, like it's not even hammering? You want that, because otherwise, I've done it many a time where you go on there, it's kind of crooked, you're like, oh, she'll figure herself out. And it, it will not figure itself out, I can tell you that. It will not. It'll rip the threads out, which is never good, or it'll mangle the wheel, which is also not best. Also, you really should be using an impact socket, but we don't need that around here. What's going on? Come on, you can start. There we go. So now we got them all started. Perfectly torqued. But more importantly, look how cool they look. Oh yeah. Actually, this thing has air shocks on. I wonder if it's still all full of air. Oh, this car's so cool. Okay. I'll get the other side on right quick and then you want to tune up the carburetor? Yeah. What do you want to do? Because really you have to have the wheels on before you do carburetor. You gotta grab the sockets and the impact. Come on, darling. You're making uh, top dollar on this. All right, here we go. I am wearing my work shirt, so okay. I'm prepared. I need all them uh, lug nuts, too. What we got going on over here? Yeah, that's how many there are. Hey. You mean... Oh my goodness. These? <laughs> it's not what I mean. I don't know if this is jacked up good, so maybe just stand clear. Where should I put these? In my pocket? Oh, we're super safe. In your shirt pocket? Yeah. That's what they're there for. Or in your shirt pocket. You want to wheel me over that wheel while you're Why at it? You everything around here? Oh, if you could do a little body work while you're at it too, that'd be fantastic. Can't hear you impacting. Man, these were really nice. Watch the paint. I'm trying to film and roll. The old film and roll, eh? I've heard good things about that. This is 180 out. What are you doing here? Yeah. Questioning my decisions in life. <laughs> you think you can do better? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah. Where are the lug nuts? They're in my oh. pocket. Where's the impact? Oh, there it is. Oh, my gosh. This is real life. Oh, 
What? These aren't the lug nuts. These are the ones I took off. You said get the nuts. The ones that are on the roof. I can't reach the roof. My, it's a car. I'm five too. Uh, I think I could do better. That was my fault. I am very lazy. Come on. I thought you had these and you're putting two washers per nut. I thought this was, I thought you're filming because you're helping speeding up. This is just embarrassing for us now. For us or for you? Honestly, for the people who are still washing. That's on them. Well, these don't even match. What the hell? I went down and got brand new washers because, uh, well, when I took the wheels off this, I stored the lug nuts on the workbench. So I found, what is going on? This one's stripped. So I found six lug nuts total, which is a few shy. This one didn't really feel like it went on nice. That's a problem, darling. What are we gonna do about that? Ooh, that doesn't feel good either, actually. What's going on here? Well, maybe it just needs a little, a little jump start. Nope. What? What have we got going on here? Uh, that one's buggered. This one looks good. Why would we have a buggered one? That's not bueno. To clean that out. Or spend the four bucks and buy another one, I guess. There we go. Hang on. Nailed it. Nailed it. What well, one's... No, oh, this one's no good. I wonder why the threads are no good in it. This one... Well, it's been used, I guess. It's it's definitely a previous. Oh yeah, look at that. It's actually, if you look at the side too, see this is it was gouged up against the the wheel. So whoever put it on last uh, might have done a piss poor job. Doesn't sound like me. So we'll get an. Actually, I think I have. I said I had six, so I have one on the workbench. We could go spend the next forty-five minutes looking for it. <laughs> for it. On the next video of DD Speed Our four lugs are good enough for now for what we're doing. We're tuning the carburetor. You only need four lug nuts. Ooh, what Don't happened? Don't forget about it. What happened there? Don't forget about where. That's I would... the four on it. Did you bugger it? I don't know what happened there, but it didn't go well. <sighs> Did I bugger it, she says. I would never do that. This thing really smells like oil too. I noticed there was a couple spots when we pulled it out under it, which is surprising because of the maintenance log we have on this. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. Send her home. Perfect. Perfect star pattern. And now it looks good. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Okay. What do we got now? I'll find that lug nut if I can. And then we'll see if it runs. Because we got the new tires on it. <laughs> That's just how hot rods go. Found it. Look at that. Should be able to send this one home. I'll make sure we store this one so I use it again next time and get cranky pants about it. Okay, let's move all the junk off the hood. Storage area. And we'll run this thing while it's freezing friggin' cold out. Yay! Yay! Are you gonna clean up all of that? That's what I'm saying. Need to figure out what wrench I need. Nope. Yep. Put that in your pocket. Yeah, okay, I'll clean this up. I gotta get a screwdriver. And we should be mint. This thing will be ready to break down on the road. One here. I need this out of your chest. 
Um, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna drop the floats. So this is really the wrong screwdriver. Can get the whole thing. There we go. So I think that is tightening it or lowering the float. Sorry. Why do you lower the float? So this is drag weed John. So you see, there's a sight glass on the side there. You want the fuel, if I kind of shake the car, it's kind of bouncing back and forth. Mm -hmm. You want that fuel level to be, I mean, on the lower side. And they're both, this thing's been sitting and it's uh, kind of high. So uh, again, I feel so bad because John explained it to me. And uh, something about science and carburetors, but the, there's more fuel in the float bowls, it will force more fuel down, so it makes it run richer somehow. So we wanna make sure we do it. So when we were on the dyno, he kept just messing with the float and messing with the air bleeds versus taking the entire carburetor apart. I've learned so much from that guy. I don't know why, but that's what happened. So we're gonna do that. Then I don't know if the screwdriver will do the, uh, oh yeah, well, we'll just, play with the idle stuff to start. We'll give them like two turns or one turn out, sorry. We'll play with that, see what it does for fueling. Well, I actually already had it, I guess, pretty good there. This is also the wrong tool. I need a screwed by Morsky screwdriver. It would be ideal. Oh, there's no way that one's gonna fit, the linkage. Oh yeah, we're actually not too bad here. Okay, so. Hands are clear. Yeah, you can do that if you want. Let's see if this thing will fire up. E brake engage. Ugh, whoops. I almost put it in gear there. Whoa. in it. This thing actually has O2 in it. So that's pretty sweet. So the black back float is good but the front has to drop. Oh yeah front this motor's noisy. I always forget about that. That drop down a little? Yeah. Oh, it's just this fender's rattling. That's a noise. Be a little more idle. It's like 12 to 1 right now, which is definitely on the fat side. So, we'll try leaning it out with the idle bits here. And reach like that. Give her a little quarter turn. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I like that. Kind of smartened up. It's not idling so rough now. Oh, this is leaking. Someone's making noise. seem happier the alternators making noise or what something was like rattling away there what's that it was like a whirring yeah the second you goosed it it kind of went away i don't know what that is because 
Do you like lubricant on like the... I don't know. The only thing it could be is the alternator, which it didn't make that noise previously, so that's different. But uh, that's running like 12 to one. That's definitely a little on the rich side. We have to do a little more tune into it at idle, but we got to drive it too and see how that works. But uh, we'll mess a little bit more with it. I'll just let it idle, get up to temperature, and then we'll... Uh, We'll see what the if the uh, heater fan's working, because then we can drive this thing. It's up like it's snowing outside. <laughs> March, stupid smarch weather. Yeah. All right, well I messed it a little bit more. We'll come back when it's warm. Seems much happier. It's got a nice little idle to it now. The supercharger really mellowed this thing out. It made it not nearly so wild. Yeah, we're still like 12, 12 to one, but supercharger stuff. Oh yeah, it's the alternator for sure. You can feel it. Some not good noise. Like you said, it'll it'll figure itself out. I drop something in there, maybe. Maybe it just needs a moment. It doesn't sound as loud anymore. No, but it's still got a growly noise to it. this do this right quick I can hardly hear it I must have dropped something or I don't know what you know what we can do is we can play with it We can see what the noise is by uh, pulling a belt. We'll see. Yeah, do whatever you want, darling. That's hot rod. Okay, so we'll just uh, oh, what the the wrong size wrench or something uh, that one hopefully pull this we'll take the belts off one at a time and see what happens to the noise. 
and hopefully it's just a bad alternator because a bad supercharger would be a bad day real bad day uh is there a 9 16 socket out there um, or any socket it would say 9 16 on it yeah. i put all my tools away thinking i was done that was my mistake what did you just drop there <laughs> what do we got oh perfect i just need this Okay. Everything is awkward on this car. How can I get in here? Well, there we go. There we go. I got it. Okay, so if we take this. Oh. You know what? The blower belt has to come off to get the other belt off. I forgot about that. That was. Again, another freaking hassle. Whip that off. So I guess we'll pull both belts off and see if the noise goes away, then do one at a time and see what happens here. If it's a rattle or if it's inside the motor or what. This is annoying. Off. So that's gone. Guess we can get everything to spin, maybe too. Oh, it feels okay. It feels okay. That feels okay. Huh. Everything kind of feels okay. I wonder why it would make a noise. Well, you know what? We'll put the this one on first. Actually, that one's a hassle to put on. It's a two-person job. We'll do this one first, because honestly, I just care if it's a blower making noise. Everything else we can fix later. This would be a... This would be Sad Dan. Oh, we don't like Sad Dan. Okay, ready? Make noise now, eh? Okay, well, that's good. Woo! Okay, crisis averted. I was not looking forward to that one making noise. So we have, must be a bad alternator or something. Something was grinding, but it feels fine. Maybe there's a little dirt or something, maybe? Oh. On the rock? Something is... It spins funny. What the heck's that about? Feels like it has a wobble in it. Need to be tightened, maybe? Huh, that's weird. I wonder if something fell in there that I knocked into it. I don't know, we'll play with that. Oh. Yeah, that's a problem. I don't know. I'm leaving it for now. I'm calling it a win. The supercharger is not mangled. It runs. A little rich. We got to deal with the carburetor. I'm going to call carburetor Ken, get his recommendations out of it. See what we can do to accomplish this thing. But it looks cool. It's home. I'm happy. For once. And it's snowing outside. Luckily, we put the shitty Nomad outside. Got the good one inside. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below if you wouldn't mind. Leave a comment, like the video, tell Danny her shirts are fantastic, and we'll see you on the next one.